Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a blind AB microphone test between the Rode Video Micro and the Boya BYMM11. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing during this test is recording both of the microphones simultaneously. And then as I'm cutting through it through the video, I will be calling one mic microphone A and the other mic microphone B. And then at the very end, I'll tell you what they are at the end. So what this is gonna be good for is for you to decide which one you like, if indeed you do like one of them, both of them, or maybe neither of them. But like I say, this is just so that I'm not trying to tell you which is the better mic or, you know, which ones which or anything like that so like i say as i go through i'll just cut between them and clearly mark microphone a and microphone b now both of these microphones are cardioid microphones which basically means is what they do they pick up mostly from the front and you reject more from the sides and from the rear as well unfortunately like both of these microphones quite often get referred to as shotgun microphones they're not really shotgun microphones really what they are is just small pencil mics because what it is with a shotgun microphone you have a thing called an interference tube which which does like a few different things to reject audio or to or reject sound and noises which makes the microphones quite hyper directional or super directional and whatnot and it also has an impact on the way that it picks up from the rear and the sides as well but like I say in this instance these are just both cardioids so what we're doing here we are testing like for like and on that as well as far as like polar pattern is concerned and whatnot what I'll do I'll do a little walk around as well just so we can gauge what they're like for off axis uh, off axis response that is so now I'm talking into one side here and basically I am a lot closer to one than the other but I will go around the other side as well as I'm doing this so as I'm cutting A, B and whatnot one of them will be a little bit more weighted because I'm closer to it but I'll make up for that by going around to the other side shortly and then what I'll do I'll come around to the back here so right now I'm speaking right into the pair of them from behind again cutting between A and B just so that we can hear the types of rejection that's going on between them and then finally what I'll do, I'll come to the other side here. So again, although when I was on the other side, I would have been weighting it towards one of the microphones. I'm now weighting it a bit more to the other one. And that's only because it is a bit closer to me as well. Okay, so as I've gone round there and done that directional test, we, you know, we should have heard a bit of a difference going on there with the amounts of rejection from the sides and from the rear. So what I'll do now, I will go handheld with the microphones and let's see how they sound doing that. Okay, so as we can see, I am now handheld with the microphones. And what it is, they're basically in the exact same configuration on a stereo bar, which is the same stereo bar that I used when they were top mounted on the camera. But obviously this time, I've got them on a pistol grip as well, just so I can obviously hand hold them. Now, when they were on the camera, the level that I had going into the camera was optimized so that I didn't get any peaking at zero. So basically what I done, I gave enough dynamic headroom to capture both of the microphones properly without any distortion or without them being too low. And obviously the exact same thing now that I'm handheld, although in this handheld variation, because they're a lot closer to my mouth, I've had to drop the level more going into the camera as well so that gives us an idea about how i'm recording these and levels and whatnot and then on playback what i'm gonna do is just level them out a bit in playback so that one doesn't jump louder than the other because when you get microphones and they look the same level on like a scope or on a vu or something like that doesn't necessarily translate into how loud they are so like i say on playback all i'll do is just re-level a bit so one isn't jumping out over the other the other thing i will also do with this test as well i will leave a link in the descriptions below where you can go and get hold of a wav file of the actual audio as well the reason for that is is that although youtube isn't actually that bad at compressing audio it compresses it nonetheless and i upload these as a wav file so uncompressed audio to give them like the best opportunity for youtube 
tube to actually compress them and make them still sound good but like i say anyone who wants to hear an uncompressed version can go into the descriptions get the link and go and get the the actual uncompressed wav file of them as well now also what i'm going to do one of these uses what is a lara shock mount which is basically a fancier shock mount than most others so what i'm going to do now is just rattle them around a bit and let's see if we can hear any kind of mechanical differences with vibrations between them so that's a bit of a light kind of like movement and now i'll go a bit mad okay now yeah that was that was quite crazy I, I get that because it was a bit wild and whatnot but that's just going to extremes just so we can see or hear if one of them is actually you know worse than the other as far as the shock mounts are concerned and what it is the lyra is on the road the boyer has just got a straight plastic shock mount so we'll see if that makes any difference as well okay so as far as this being handheld this will give us a really good idea of how how well they sound close up like this and how different they sound from what they were when they were on the camera because what will happen as we get closer, one of them might sound more bassier or one of them might sound a bit brighter. I don't know yet, but you can make up that decision for yourselves. And the other thing that I'll do as well, I'll just do a quick directional test. So as I'm talking right now, I'll turn them around quite slow, or well, as slow as I can get. <laughs> right, wait there. I've got a car. I'm trying to do three things here. <laughs> I'm trying to talk, look at a monitor and turn the microphones. And it's really difficult because usually I forget my name when somebody asks me a second question. There we go. So that was me just turning it round so we could get an idea of the off-axis response as it was going round. And just like in the first test as well, one of them will have been a bit louder at one point only because it would have been closer to me. But that'll give us a fairly good idea of what's going on. Now, let me just hold it into the breeze. Okay, now that's not like a big mad wind, but you know, it's a, it was a fairly, fairly stiffish breeze and hopefully, you know, we didn't hear anything on either of them or if we did, then that'll give us another indication as to what they're both capable of. Anyways, I think I've done enough testing here for people to kind of, of hazard a guess over which one either that they like or to guess which microphone was which. So the reveal is that microphone B was the Rode Video Micro and microphone A was the Boyer BYM. M11. Okay, so like I say, this was just something for people to work out for themselves between these two microphones, which one they liked. And I'm not going to give anyone any ideas about what I think is the better one, because it's always down to the person using the microphone and for whatever scenario that they're using them as to what the best microphone is for them. Anyways, I think I've talked myself out now, so that'll be enough for this. And the only thing that remains for me to say right now is thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.